Hey guys, Robert here, and welcome to a new another lesson of Pro Teaches New. What in returning again is Bianca. Hiya. And we're picking up where we were last time on a Superman Secret Identity. We are going to do with the most obvious follow-up with Batman Creature of the Night, as you also you see over there. And this took Kurt Busiek years to do, and it was also one of the last works of the artist G John Paul Leon. He has no intention of doing a Wonder Woman one, if anyone ever wants to ask. And Aww. this one is very different. After going through the last one, how would you sum up Secret Identity. Hmm. Super, super fun, super heartwarming. There's so much heart in it. It almost makes me feel like a. Uh, I meant more like the theme. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut up. I meant more like the theme of the story. Oh. I don't know what that means. <laughs> it's, it's all about, well, having your own secret identity and what that means for you and what you would do to protect that in your family. Realistic, I guess. Yeah, but I'm just saying that's what I think the theme was. Yeah. All this right. reminds me of a Imagine Stan Lee kind of comic. Kind but it's of, disappointing oh, that he won't do a Wonder Woman one. Yeah, but I think it's good. he might have an, an inkling of an idea, but I think he had more of a Batman idea here than he did for that. And where he goes with this, I think you understand why it might be even trickier for him to do a Wonder Woman one. Mm. What about a lantern? Uh, I think he would keep it to the Trinity, but I think keep it to the world's finest for now is a good idea. By the way, you just gave me an idea of what we could do in the future. Just imagine <laughs> Stan Lee creating the DC Universe. Yay. But yeah, let's dive right in. Kurt, was that Nightwing? Uh, it was an ad. Oh, okay. I was so confused. Yeah, this like, was the going point on? the time when Sam Humphreys took over uh, um, for a brief time around issue 35. Mm, okay. Much like the um, Superman one, it opens up with a Batman thing. Batman was a hero for children. A little morbid, perhaps. Bruce Wayne, orphan as a child and a tragic robbery. But that wasn't the point. The point was that he devoted his life to training himself to physically and mental perfection so he could fight crime. A harmless fantasy, or at least that's what I'd have told you back then. <laughs> my name is Alton Fredericks Jasper, but this story concerned my uh, my uh, nie my niece's child. I, uh, Bruce, come on, kiddo, finish up, huh? Huh? Bruce Wayne right. So instead of actually having it be a Rain, uh, Bruce Wayne, and like we had Clark Kent, he's more broad stroking it. <laughs> So basically, this is his um, great uncle who's talking about this. Is that my niece? Okay. My niece's child, so that'll be his great uncle. Okay. I think. The name was probably <laughs> why he um, fascinated on the bat and, and the Batman so thoroughly. You've got to go soon if you want to hit the zoo while I drop your dad at the airport. Yeah, okay. Though Carol and Henry were hardly high society millionaires. Done. Getting my coat. Henry was a VP at John Hancock Insurance. Carol volunteered at the library when Bruce was at school. Uh, but I suppose they do just fine if you wanted to imagine them and the wings and them the wings of the comic books. Uh, and the, and plus Bruce had an Alfred. Uncle Alfred. Hey, Uncle Alfred. My <laughs> uh, goodness, you're immense, young Wainwright. Hey, have you been growing behind my back? Your ancient uncle can't lift you. Al and Alton Frederick. Alfred. That, so in other words, he, the narrator's Alfred. It made sense to an eight-year-old, at least. I was his great uncle, the only living relative on either side. I dotted on him, enjoyed his energy, playing Batman games past the time, and gave him a focus for his boundless imagination. And I swear, he read at uh, and he read at years above his age level, thanks to all those comic books. About an hour, an hour, Alton. Take your time, dear. We'll meet at the cafe. Come on, let's go see the bats. And come and call me Ma and, uh, and call me Master Bruce. He enjoyed being an almost Batman. He paused when saying his name to separate the Wayne and Wayne from the right. He even dreamed about being Batman at times. He told me, huh? I Harmless, I, I saw. What child wouldn't want to be Batman after all? 
So unlike Clark, who wanted to get away from it all for obvious reasons, Bruce here embraced it. Because he wasn't fully a Bruce Wayne. He wasn't mocked for it and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, it was Halloween night, 1968, that it happened or started. I'm not sure which is more accurate. Na 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 He Thank liked living you. in Boston, he told me. Probably Batman should, and, pro and probably Batman should live and live in New York because Gotham is a nickname for New York from some old stories by Washington and Washington Irving. And and um, think of that, an eight-year-old knowing Washington Irving. What do you say, Bruce? And Bruce, thank you. Happy Halloween. But New York was Metropolis, too. And that was Superman's home. Boston felt more like Gotham City, he said. The old buildings, the crooked alleyways, the shadows at night, it felt like mysterious. Uh, mysterious and danger. Want to stay out longer? You're halfway to dreamland already, kid. Time for home. I was like, want to stay out longer? It's a, it's cool at night. All dark and spooky, like the penguin might jump out of the shadows. Or the Joker. Out on Halloween, kid. You know what criminals are like. Superstitious and cowardly. Right. They stay in on Halloween. Wouldn't want the goblins getting them. Especially at Beacon Hall. They wouldn't dare. Henry, the door. I didn't leave it open. What's going? I don't believe it. We've been... Huh? Police reports say they surprised the intruders. Three or four men looking for jewelry, valuables, anything easy to carry away, and pricey enough to sell out of a fence. Your basic smash and grab with some vandalism thrown in. Henry and Carol surprised them in the front parlor. Bruce! Bruce, want run! Blam! And they died in the kitchen. Carol died first. She was beaten, her jaw broken. Maybe she didn't answer fast enough, didn't tell where more valuables were. She was shot once in the forehead. Henry fought. After seeing his wife shot, or, or to try to protect Bruce, he must have known he didn't stand a chance. Four bullets in the chest and neck. Any one of them would have done the job. Bruce! Bruce! Blam! And Bruce? I looked at them as fierce as I could. Criminals are a superstitious and cowardly lot. If I could have scared them off then run to get a doctor. You're too late, little trooper. Should have run like Mama said. Hey, no, he's just a blam. I remember floating somewhere dark but warm um, and wasn't, I wasn't alone. There was someone else uh, and whoever it was came really clo and close and I could hear him without hearing anything. Safe. You're safe. He's back. We have a pulse. He was, he was gone for about 40 seconds. He didn't respond to... He's back, nurse. He's and and he, let's sort him up. He's going to be fine. Safe. I met Officer Gordon when I woke up. Kid, kid, you awake? Huh? Hey, Bruce. My name's Gordon. You've been through a lot. You feeling a little better? Maybe up to talking a little? Gordon. Yo, he looks exactly like Jeffrey. Oh, this was long before that. I know. Like Commissioner Gordon? <laughs> no, Gordon Hoover. Look. I know this is a bit rough, but if I can ask a couple of questions, Hoover tried to get descriptions from Bruce. All he could say, though, was that it was dark. They were big. One of them had longish hair. Officer Gordon, could you ask, are there any comic books? Yeah, sure. I'll ask one of the nurses. They like Batman, am I right? My mom and dad. Where are my mom and dad? Oof. He wouldn't believe it until he saw the grace. And even then, I don't think he fully accepted it uh, at first. It must have been, it might have been different if he had been able to attend the funeral, had the comfort of, and comfort of rituals such as it was. As, um, but he'd been in a coma almost two months, and no one knew if he'd come out of it. Uh, and we hadn't been able to wait. So Carol and Henry, they were just names on granite by then. He might, uh, he must have felt so terribly lost. Oh, that's even worse, isn't it? He wanted to be like Batman. No, no, not that. Like he oh. said, the the comfort of the ritual. Somehow when you see, you know, some people feel like when you see them going into the ground, you kind of feel, it feels real. Oh, uh, okay. But in this case, he's here and they're already buried. So he's feeling there's that disconnect. Ah, he was moved to a private care facility for the next six weeks. 
and he spent a lot of time waiting and writing in his journal. It had started as a school assignment, but he kept going off and on, off and on. Later, Dr. Lester and Lester told him if it and it would it would help organize his thoughts. Before his mother would t tease him about it sometimes, call it a diary. He'd howl and complain, saying, "Diaries are girl stuff." I if it, it was a journal, a journal. Afterwards, I guess she can call it whatever she wants. The day that Bone Doctor brought me more more Batman comics from when he was a kid, ones I've never seen. They're pretty good, but I can't help thinking, if Batman was real, if Batman had been there, he could have, he would have. I love how they go back and forth. Um, so, um, but yeah, if I'd been able to take him, if he felt like he had family, thing, and things might have been different. Still. The Cornerstone Academy was an excellent school. I'd gone there myself. It would provide a first-rate education, give young Bruce the knowledge, connections, and standing to do well in life, and particularly for a boy of his means. His parents had amazed, amassed a respectful portfolio, and their insurance made it all the larger. Still, if I'd been able to take him, I don't want to live here. I want to live with you, Uncle Alfred. I want to live with you. Dear boy, Alfred. Uncle Alfred's the executor of mom and dad's estate. That means he takes care of their money until I grow up. But he won't take care of me. He doesn't want me. The other kids at Cornerstone don't like me. I don't care. Wainwright, parents shot. Cried like a baby on the front step. Comic books. I don't care. Fight, 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 fight. He called the policeman a lot. Asked for information on the investigation. Not that there was any. On more um, and one more burglary gone wrong, even in a rich neighborhood, other more recent crimes took precedent. Sorry, kid. But if anything turns up, you'll be the first to know. Oh, to Bruce, it must have seemed like no one cared, no, and not above him, not about it, not about him, not about his loss. And then there was me. I saw him every week, usually at the zoo, never at my at my home in Bay Village. That would just wouldn't do. Bruce, dear child, you know I'd love nothing more than to have you come live with me. You're Carol's child, my only blood kid. But I live alone, and my lifestyle, the child welfare authorities just think you'd be better off at that. No, you're lying. You don't want me. You just want mom and dad's money, that's all. I hate you. I hate you. Bruce, it's not, it's not fair. It's not. Mom and dad, Uncle Alfred, Cornerstone, Officer Gordon. In the comics, this wouldn't. It would. Batman would. It shouldn't be like this. It shouldn't be like this. It shouldn't be. Ooh. That's when they made me go see Dr. Lester the first time. I talked to another psychiatrist after I was shot, but just a little. Dr. Lester asked me a lot of questions about dreams, about mom and dad, about how I felt about them being dead. How did he think I felt? I told him I didn't like it here, and mostly what I felt is what that I wanted to go home. Where's that, he asked. I figured out he thought I broke the window in the bad house. Everyone thought that too. Check with the zoo people if you don't believe me. Check with the police who came. Who came? The busted glass was all on the outside. That's like a clue. It's from, it was broken from the inside. But he just shook his head and asked me about dreams or his ink cards or something. I don't like him. He asks a lot of questions, but he doesn't listen. Oh boy, isn't that relatable? <laughs> and I do want to go home. I'd want to more than anything. And that night, that night, ooh, oof. It wasn't a dream. It was more like, I don't know, a movie. Watching something happening on TV, like watching. Some kids at school got the paper, but there wasn't anything about it. Wouldn't, and would there be reports of crimes that didn't happen? People wouldn't run to the police and, and say they saw whatever that was. That kind of thing only happens on shock theater. I asked to go see mom and dad again. They said, okay, if I talked to Dr. Lester after. I wouldn't tell him anything. So I had a dream, or whatever he'd call it. I mean, he'd call it a dream. I just wanted to tell mom about it, to hear her laugh and say it was creepy, for dad to mess my hair. It's not fair, all of it. It's just not fair. In the, in the summer, Bruce went to France with a school group, but and by ship, not by plane. There were classes, and there were classes, some history, some French. And in France, we saw the Louvre, the, the Louvre, and the Louvre, Louvre, how do you say it again? <laughs> the Louvre. The Louvre, yeah, the R silent. 
Museum and Notre Dame and the Eiffel Tower. We took a bus to some places with a bridge where some guy painted water lilies. It was an education opportunity, they said. Afterwards, they went to a... I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, I just caught, realized I caught myself reading again. <laughs> but I, I like how there's two narrators in this. One who's more grounded and one who's clearly a broken... Let's be honest, a broken mind. Yeah. When he got home for the fall term, I told him he could just call me Alfred now. I tried to spend uh, time with him. I saw him at Cornerstone. I saw him at the zoo twice. I took him to the theater, introduced him to some of my friends. Philip, and this is G and Gerald. Nice to meet you, young man. I never mm -hmm. see him at his house. I only see him with other people around. I want to talk about mom and dad with someone who isn't Dr. Lester, but I never get to. I'm polite. I learned how to be polite, but it's not fair. I sneak out of school and ride the trains into Boston sometimes and just walk. I want to go home. I want to be somewhere where I don't have to be polite and careful and don't have to be nice to people. Where I, where I, I wasn't even sleeping the next time it happened. A couple of nights later, though, there was a house, a big house. I couldn't see it, but it was there. I lived there, but I couldn't reach it. There were thorns. And I had to keep pushing through. I had to reach my house. I had to. And then... I could see their faces, but not at first. Who are you? You're your parents, Bruce. Henry and Carol Wainwright. No, you're the Waynes from the comic books. No, you just can't remember our faces, kiddo. The man who killed us got away, and you're forgetting us. So in your mind, you're giving us these. No, I do remember your faces. You don't. All that going to Paris and playing and riding horses? No, no. I could remember. I did remember. And I made them, made their faces. That time it was a dream. Were they right? Was I forgetting them? I thought about them all the time, but I had to do something. They were mom and dad. But Officer uh, and Gore, Officer Hoover, it's been almost a year. There's got to be something. Look, kid, I'm supposed to tell you that it's still an open case. We're running down all possible leads, but you got to stop this. We got nothing. That's why it's on my desk instead of a homicide detective. You're the only witness, and you didn't see much. No way to trace the stuff they stole. Nothing usual from ballistics. If we catch if we catch a break on this, it'll be because we got lucky. Maybe we'll turn up something in the course of another investigation. It gives us a new lead, a new idea. But I get it, Officer Hoover. Thanks for your time. Another investigation. He meant another crime. Maybe someone else's mom and dad killed, and that might tell them something. They call that lucky. It didn't sound lucky. Says it was uh, it was a, a monster, Pete. Big shadowy wing thing was glowing eyes. Ripped up three of his goons, he says. Wants us to protect him. Sampling his own merchandise. He said it was it was all Hmm? I tried to calm myself, to clear my mind, like Dr. Lester said. If it was out there, I mean, if it was out there, I reached out trying to feel it again, to see it. Over the rooftops in the shadows, in the dark places, moving like water, like smoke. And I saw, I didn't just see this time. The guy who killed mo the guy who killed mom and dad. Uh, someone knew someone somewhere. Someone. Ah! Halloween robbery. Two dead. Beacon Hill. Who? Who? He he saw he it saw things in their eyes, in their brains. I saw some of them too. Just glimpses. They ne and things they'd have never told the police. It made them know they should tell. Tell everything or be back. Most didn't know anything about mom and dad. A few, though, a few had heard things. There was also many skivs turning themselves in, showing up beat, unconscious, and on our front ste and steps, and confession, handing in evidence like you can't imagine. You believe in this creature they're talking about? Giant bat or whatever? Here's a guy, three of them mentioned him. A home invader, not in the system. Ask someone else, McCain. I'm too happy clearing cases to think about it. <clears throat> uh, an actor, they say. A waiter. I'll, be, I'll, and I'll bet, but if um, I could clear this, uh, get credit for a collar, but it was the other names. Well, and we'll look at him, and we'll look at him uh, and get through all this. What, something wrong? For a second, it felt like someone was right behind me. An actor? It just showed up in my head. I don't know why. He called me Little Trooper. I looked it up and found Trooper, member of an acting troupe. Maybe it meant something. I was in social studies learning about the Blue Garrison House, and I knew Donnie and Brada, Don Braden, was his stage name. He acted a little. The police had his name, but hadn't found him yet. 
Mr. Rainwhite, are you keeping? Uh, are we keeping you from something more important? Huh? That's like, can I go to the boys' room? I uh, got a. I knew. Why did I know? It was all that bad thing. But what is it? Where does it come from? See what I mean, though, by how mysterious it said? Yeah. And then her, his name was Donald Br and Bredo, they told me. He'd been preparing to end a run. He'd heard something on the street. The police were making a lot of arrests, people he knew. They hadn't come to talk to him yet, but they were planning to. He had a bus ticket for Los Angeles. Brad, oh, he was running. We saw it in his eyes. No, no. Ugh. He, mom and dad, little trooper. I saw Gordon and Hoover dial the phone through its eyes. I didn't come where, it came, I didn't know where it came from, but I wanted to help so much. Bruce, Officer Hoover, could you come down to the station afternoon? I've already spoken to your uncle. Braddon was a failed actor who hung around with the theater, the theater scene, committed robberies to keep going. They had him on four robberies, enough to put him away, and they knew of another killing, but had no proof. They didn't have enough to prove he killed Henry and Carol. They needed Bruce for that. I was wary. I know. Not more pictures, though. No. Not more pictures. It's him. Number three. You sure, kid? He's the man you saw who? Number three. He's the one. All right, we're done. Tell the others they can take fake bandages off and return Brad out to the... Bruce, wait. Don't go out there. They'll still be in, in, in the... Bruce! It was him. The way his shoulders went, his hair, I'm almost sure. If it was a story, he'd have uh, and he'd have said something like, little troop again, but he didn't. Still, I'd seen it in his eyes, last night through the creature's eyes. It wasn't as clean as it should have been, but it was done. It was over. Bruce began going to the zoo again. I took him sometimes. It had been some time since the bats. They'd agreed to allow him into the bat house again without something to, some money to watch him. I watched the bats for a while. Again, what do you think of this so far? <clears throat> Mysterious. Huh? Very much so. Ve again, very different. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, but I had to talk to someone, and not Dr. Lester. And after a while, I felt like I needed to be on the roof. It was windy. It was cold. And the leaves, the wind and the leaves, they changed. And, oh, Bruce safe you safe and it it was like i knew him from a long time back and i knew he didn't just up and decide to help me i'd made him i wanted someone like batman someone who can make things like they're supposed to be make things fair i wanted someone like batman so much i'd almost let it all go if uncle alfred had been able to listen if i had been and had anyone that t i could talk to i'd have let him go and it'd be over but now batman I wasn't alone anymore. Donald uh, wound up getting arra uh, arraigned for nine counts of robbery, three of murder, one attempted murder, and other charges. He gave up his accomplishments. They were all going to fall. For Christmas, I bought Bruce a police hand, um, hand band radio. He said he wanted it because he was thinking of going into law enforcement. I thought it was a good way to bring him some closure. If, o if we'd only know... So, and again, that's just the first books, but it's, isn't it pretty dense? It feels so much longer than the Superman one. I know. <clears throat> but yeah, um, but yeah um, you still read comic books? Yeah, collect them, actually. Now, remember, this is all set. He was a young boy in the 60s, so we're going through This is a period piece. I think that was one of the other good, smart moves that he made. Hmm. So when you think about it, that means he started with the Adam West Batman. But he's getting a Batman that's much darker and grittier. Makes sense. I was like, oh, they're going from the 19, the 1940s. No, yeah, yeah, the 1940s. Well, 60s, one. more or less, but yeah. No, yeah, the they're going to the 1940s comics. Oh, right, right. Hard to find them to read what was everything they load us up with for class. There's a way to take a break, you know. Are they valuable? They can be, I guess, but mostly I just like Batman stuff since I was a kid, all because of my name. Hi, I'm Bruce. Bruce, right, and Batman's, oh, oh, you're Bruce Wainwright. I've heard of you. Can't get anything past a Harvard girl, can I? And you're, I'm, uh, I'm Sharon, I, I didn't mean to bother you. 
I, I, I was just, I had a soda at Bailey's and I was heading back to, nice to meet you, Sherry. Look, I've got a class, but I'd like to continue this. Want to grab a burger or a movie or something, say Friday night? I, that'd be great. I'm in cur I'm Courier, Sharon Taft. I'm in the dictionary. I'll call tonight. I didn't have a Robin, a Batcave, or even a Batmobile. I'd been in, in, I'd been in the news, though, mostly for being rich. The Globe had done a recent profile on Wainwright Investment, the Herald, too. Forbes even called me a boy wonder. That was cute. Mr. Bruce, got today's mail for you. Thanks, Jan. Papers, too? Papers, too. And after all, when it came to Batman connections, up there, up there. I had I had the really important one covered. We found the Doolin op operation two nights ago, he and I. A chop shop handling stolen cars taken from all over the city. One of several, a big professional organization. The police hadn't been able to get a handle on them yet. He killed the lights before he went in. Aside from scaring the crap out of them, it makes it hard to see what they're up against. Kill it! Kill it! The cops had been sniffing around. They knew st and stolen goods were going through here, but didn't have enough for a search warrant. We didn't have that problem. Anything interesting? Just the usual. This, there wasn't anything but the chop shop, not in the Globe or the Herald. I had been coming to expect that. It, so, it made a sort of sense. Crazy stories about some giant wing thing coming from lowlifes and druggies? Who believe it? Still, we've been doing this for years by then. You think someone will put it together? Maybe there was something about the bad guy that made people forget him. The Inquirer? Jan considered my subscription complete idiocy, I bet didn't have a problem with crazy rantings. They've never mentioned Batman, though. I thought maybe DC Comics had lawyers shutting them down. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought trademark laws would protect our secrets? Dracula. Pfft. As for the police, I'd come up with a way to keep them happy, too. There wouldn't be any trail past the chop shop. No links to the bigger operation. But Batman and I, we'd seen the head man come through. Seen him look through the license plates from the stolen cars. Handle them. His finger bits would connect him to the stolen cars. That lead the cops to his other op and properties, including the rest of the chop shops. Another feather in the cap of my old pal, Officer Gordon. My uncle Alfred, well, Alton Fredericks, really. Alton Frederick Jepson. Ah, Bruce, we were just talking about you. He'd done well, too. He And he'd founded Wainwright Investment in 1969 as a way of taking care of my parents' estate and keeping it healthy until I inherited. I haven't done something stupid again, have I? He'd done a lot more than keep it healthy, and I was proud and proud that since I started working there alongside school, the hair parent learning and the ropes, we've gotten healthier and healthier. <laughs> no, no, and that's stupid at all. In fact, I'm starting to think you're leading a charmed life. You remember Pennyworth Manufacturing? You wanted to, to invest? The board didn't see it. Well, they just came through. Big time. He did? Stroke of luck, really. Freight, a freighter from Germany carrying heavy machinery found, found, uh, foundered in an unexpected storm just off Iceland. No one killed, thank God. The machinery was for Danvers to and Tool and Die. It would take months to replace. So they had to back out of a contract with Rayson for Valerium Springs. And our boys at Pennyworth, who already have the right, the right equipment, picked up a $17 million contract and the inside track for future business. So we've got you to thank, Bruce. Clap, clap, you know. <laughs> to be honest, I just like the name. Ha, <laughs> Bruce, you kidder. That was Bruce back then. And a very sharp mind and learning fast, but unpredictable. Sometimes whimsical, even naive. But he was building and building um, quite a track record. I worried about him sometimes. He seemed to have Weather and um, Weather Carol and Henry's death as well as could be hoped. He seemed happy, but there was something. Bruce, how are you doing all and all in uh, how are you doing all in all? You all right? Of course I am. Why wouldn't I be? I didn't think it was my bi um, business to pry. We were all and we all have our inner lives, uh, yeah, lives, and we share them or not as we choose. Privacy was important. I thought. Was I all right? I tell you, uh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, having a lot of girls. Need to study test coming up, and I've got to pay for ha uh, and I've got to pay for having wonderful evenings. Eventually, who I wanted to be. Oh, you're safe. I'm safe. Good. I still don't know where he come from, but he's been manifested like this since I was nine. 
a wish for someone like him, wish so hard. It had been a ritual with us. He'd make sure I was safe. Then he'd go out on the night's work, out in the dark. Are you, are you okay? How's it going out there? There's so much. So much. Hey, yeah. You can do it. You're Batman, right? I could see through his eyes, experience what he saw and heard, even his memories. Sometimes I'd spend whole nights prowling with him. Sometimes I just needed to sleep. But even then, I knew he was out there, looking for crime, keeping the city safe. It was comforting just knowing. But it was big, too. A big seeker, one that was always with me. And not one I could share with anyone. I tried a couple of times. An avenging angel, redressing the world's ills, making everyone come out right, making things fair. Easy to see why it'd be a comforting fantasy for you, Bruce. But it's essentially juvenile. You really need to let go and cope with the real world. What, you pretend to be Batman? Kinky. You have a costume? Maybe a Robin costume? No, not like that. <laughs> and, if there was, and if he was there, it could have been there on Halloween. I know. But I didn't know what to say. How to tell anyone without looking like a lunatic. Didn't even know where to start. There was Alfred. But Alfred had his own life. One he kept, liked to keep private. He used to think Alfred didn't want me in his life. Didn't want to be burdened. It took a while to figure out. I didn't know Bay Village was a gay neighborhood back then. But all of his friends were men. And their private jokes, the way they look at each other... Those weren't easy times for gay men, and the trouble that he'd have brought down raising a little kid in that world in the late 60s. I thought he was abandoning me, but he'd done everything he could. That explains a lot! Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, he looks kind of sad, but like, what's yeah. going on? Now you know. I guess he was the first gay Alfred. <laughs> and Batman? If I talked to Alfred about Batman, I don't think he'd understand any more than Dr. Lester did. He think he screwed up, that I wasn't right in the head because he didn't do enough. You can't do that to him. Still, it'd be nice to talk to someone. Uh, times rolled on. He did well in his studies, graduated high in his class. You think to look and, and you think to look at him that he just a, and that he's just a carefree young man, gifted, privileged. But there was something he held in reserve. It wasn't in his schooling. It didn't seem to be in his social life, and it wasn't in business. He was sharp with almost uh, almost pretty natural instincts. Things for the right move and moves at the right times. Wainwright investment grew, dwarfing his modest beginnings. It wasn't all him. I do like to think I'd have done some. I'd have some skills, and we had an excellent staff. But a great deal of it was him. And still, there was something more going on, something private but strongly felt. Until then, then, hey Alfred. I brought some in, in a, I brought in enough business that we can do some, uh, something extravagant and, and idealistic just because I want to. Hit me. Crime. The police, the courts, law enforcement, about, and it's about punishing the guilty. That's what it is. It's enforcing the law, right? But what about the innocent? What about the victim? I had you. I had my inheritance. I was set up pretty well to survive when mom and dad got killed, and it was still pretty rough. Remember the fights I'd get into? Crime leaves victims, and they're not as all as lucky as I was. I want to start a foundation. Help them. Bruce, we're doing well, yes, but what you're talking about, there's no end to it. Injustice, despair, you can't change the world, lad. Maybe not yet. Bruce, don't worry. I don't want to throw away all the money, but it's one of my Batman things, I guess. There was an issue back in 1968. Bruce man been into something like this. Set up VIP. Victims Incorporated program to help um, people harmed by crime. It's kind of a stupid name, but I read the issue over and over those first few years, and it's it's not it's not a bad idea. I'm not trying to change the world, not all of it, just a few people's world. There are kids like me who lost everything, who are alone, stuck in an orphanage somewhere, feeling lost and scared. We could start small, just a few of them, just one even, just help. You're a good man, Bruce. Let's try it. But yes, let's start small. A pilot program. One child, and we'll see how it goes. Talk to Bob Carson. He'll know how to set it up. Thanks, Alfred. It's going to work. You'll see. I just knew just where to start. 14-year-old girl. Her parents shot in the back, in a back alley in Charlestown. No living relative. Her name was Robin. Robin Highland. It was her name that spurred me on, of course. I couldn't just walk away. Not once I knew about her. Not from a Robin, but I wasn't stupid about it either. I didn't want her to be my partner or even to meet her. Probably shouldn't, 
young guy, teenage girl. People would make it weird. I let Bob do all the publicity stuff. Alfred insisted the firm needed us to do. And uh, publicity stuff, Alfred insisted the firm needed us to do. And I didn't think she was going to manifest a ghostly, a ghostly red, yellow, and green crime fighting songbird. But she was going to go to Cornerstone, get a chance at a life that had been taken from her. That was enough. I just wanted, got him, fell for a lead. I just wanted her to know that for all it was, and for all that was big, scary, and unending, she wasn't alone. I knew that she'd lost, and what she lost. I knew how she felt. I know how overwhelming it was. It felt good. He said there was so much out there, so much to fight. He was Batman, though. He could handle it, but that didn't mean he should have to do it alone, right? That was my town, uh, my town, our town. And we were going to fix it, make things right, do some good. But it didn't stop there. I wanted to do more. I talked to as many people as I could, looking for the right proposal, the right business opportunity. Modems, gentlemen. And when I found it, modems will be hugely important as the computer industry goes fast. Oh, boy! <laughs> I hope you'll consider a proposal. I think we'd be a good fit. Very strong presentation, Martin. Why don't you walk out? I told him we'd be in touch soon, and So, Alf, what do you think? Good business plan, right? Everything's there. The whole package. Well, yes. I think we should back him. Motors are already a gross business, and there's no ceiling in sight. I'm not so sure. He's talked to everyone. He's been turned down everywhere. Because of his business plan? Well, no, but... Or because he's black. It's not just... Right. It's not that we're prejudiced. It's his suppliers, his customers. They're the ones with issues. Racism makes it harder for him at every turn, every part of business. And that's part of his business plan at risk. We just, and we just worry about that, the risk. Well, yes, more are, and it's not fair, Alf. No, it's not. It really is, it, but it's reality. Someone should fix it. Bruce, Alf, haven't you had enough prejudice in your life? Can you really just abandon him to it? It's reality. Let's profit from it. You, how? All right. You're an idealistic and young dreamer, and I understand why. And you think you can push the world around and it won't push back. But we can't risk the firm on, on quixotic gestures, no matter how nobly intended. Doing the right thing can get very expensive. Still, we'll be careful. We won't overexpose ourselves. And, we'll, and, and we're doing well. We can afford a few gambles. This will be good, Alf. You'll see. I had a feeling. I just knew it was going to work. Maybe it, maybe it would work out. Something had changed about Bruce. He seemed calmer, more confident, happier. He brought a larger, a stronger sense of purpose, of commitment to the office, energizing the staff like he was head coach, the cheerleader, and team player. And at the annual t um, Timmy Fun Gala, um, he, uh, he shot me such a, what, no date look? I almost burst out laughing, uh, which wouldn't have been good for our relationship with the Boston Red Sox. <laughs> He knows and doesn't care, so he thinks that all and all there should be to it. I should go ahead and tell the world. A pleasure, Bruce, Bruce, the world. The world doesn't become what you want just because you want it to. You'll learn. Let's hope someone does. Things were going well. We were making money, getting more involved in good causes. The Wainwright Foundation began sponsoring four more orphans who lost their family to crime. But our first Robin... The guidance counselor at Cornerstone said she was still having a rough time. And her psychologist, they said she was isolated, was drawn, that she couldn't get past her parents' death. I wanted to help, but I wanted to find them, the men who killed her parents, the men who shattered her world. I wanted to find them and bring them to justice, but I didn't know where to start. I suppose I was obsessing about it. Bruce, hey, Bruce, wait till you hear this. Carl and... Benares, the head of Biotech Link, the main competitor of your Martin Dataflow guy. He's been arrested, charged with drug trafficking, drug trafficking, uh, and just been called a meeting about, about it. Wanted you there. Open and shut case, they said. He was using tech shipments from China to hide heroin deliveries. This is huge for us. Uh, computer companies are scrambling to shut him off, find new suppliers, and we're in an ideal position. Bruce, are you with us? Huh? Yeah, of course. Let's keep an eye on it. It's great news. Just great, but I've got a thing right now. I should have paid more attention. I really should have. But if you notice, things are coming conveniently into place, right? Yeah. 
But yeah, you go see Detective Gordon. You look like you use a new hat. Maybe a new coat? Bruce, really? Look, let's talk. Robin and Heglin, and you know we're, we're sponsoring her. You remember her case? She's hurting, Gordon. She needs answers. She needs some closure, and I want to take a look at the, co- the case file. Can't. How about a new car? Bribing him! <laughs> there wasn't much more than I already knew. Oh, oh just one sec. Um, it wasn't going. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't on the way to anywhere else that might be going. But somehow, somehow, the police conducted dozens of interviews. Dan he- Heglin was an accountant, so they looked hard at his clients, looking for organized crime connections. They looked at neighbors. They didn't find anything in the end. Um, oh yeah. So solve the case for us, kid. It looks like the BPD did all they could. Thanks for letting me see it. I just wish there was answers, justice for their daughter. I tell you what this case needs. It needs Batman. Huh? You're playing with me, kid. You know something about about something, because if you do... Whoa, whoa. I just... I like comics, Detective Hoover. That's all. Remember? Yeah? Something ain't right, kid. About you, kid. And I don't like it. Next time, just save your hat and cars for someone else, will ya? He knew about Batman. Knew something, at least. He knew, and he didn't like it. Didn't want him around. But why? He made Gordon's job easier. Made things better for everyone. Made things right. Just. Are you starting to see how Bruce's delusion all about right and just? Yeah. You're starting to get that feeling, aren't you? Yeah, he, like, he's understanding that even though he's helping, like, it's the real world, you know. People are going to get freaked out. If you notice, this is all, I think this is the other reason why Busek wants to only do two. This is the complete antithesis of Secret Identity, where Clark understood the real world. Bruce doesn't. (laughs) Which is ironic because normally it's Batman who understands the real world even better than Superman. I mean, depending on the writer, of course. Yeah. The police thought it was bad luck. Or they'd gone to Charlestown to score some drugs or something and went wrong. We didn't believe that, so we looked harder. The Hedgeland. Talk to me. Tell me. I. I basically, I start spying on him, a childless widower, um, all this stuff. He's just putting on a big fight trying to find out who killed him. Oh. Uh, where is he, and where is he is? Where he keeps his records now? I had a Meyer role in, at least to some degree. I had a Meyer more if he'd gone to the cops, but then he'd probably be dead. You can only ask people to be brave. No, please, stay back. Wait, hold on. Yeah. All right. It ain't fair. Ain't no fair. No, not yet. It was easy for them to find Aronai and his records, to point the cops in the right direction. Major crime ring smash. The news about the Headland murders made page 826 on the third day. But hopefully it'd be enough to give her answers, let her know her parents were innocent and that justice had been done. He seemed happier for a while, more focused, more involved with Wainwright business. And with um, Bytling's president in jail, we moved aggressively on data and flows behalf. It took a year, but when it came time for the uh, TPO, uh, Bruce, I want to thank you again. You backed us when no one else would. Even you made a good product, Martin, and you had a solid business plan. Well, I knew that. I just know what kind of and, and what a risk you took too. You deserve your success, Martin, uh, every bit of it. And we're happy to ride the wave with you. Pick up some of ourselves. This is your day. Enjoy it, Mr. Rainwright. I'm, I'm Robin H- and Hel- Eglin. Robin, your uncle, Mr. Jepson. He got me in. I want to say thanks. All you've done, it's meant so much to. I'm glad we could help. I know what you've been through, some of it at least. So, uh, you must be close to finishing high school. Any idea yet what you want to do? I thought, my dad said I could join him in his business, and I thought I might do that anyway. But now, you make a lot of money, but then you use it to help people. I think I might like to do something like that, help people who need it. Really? Oh, well, maybe we can arrange something. No, no, I wasn't asking for... 
didn't mean it like, don't worry about it. We always need people, especially in the charity wing, but we need the and the best. You'd have to get excellent grades. I hadn't thought about what she'd do after Cornerstone, but if she wanted to help too, it was a nice idea. Maybe it'd work. Who says you can't make the world fair? Who says you can't make it better? Hey kid, remember this? Huh? Detective Hoover? Interesting thing. It's all you maybe want to know. The evidence against Car Carl Benes that put him away? It was phony. What? It was, it, oh, it was real stuff. Uh, and, but it was planted. Swiped out of a police evidence lockup in not Nasha. Took all this, uh, this while to strain out. You wouldn't be buying any new cars in New Hampshire's kid, would you? What? It's just so convenient for you and your big computer shindig here. Him getting taken off the board. It, uh, it set you up real nice. Enjoy the party, kid. We'll talk later, I'm sure. Real sure. But it can't, it's not, it doesn't make any. I had Batman look into it. Saw it through his eyes. Oh, hold on a second. Um, I saw the police discover the drug. It can't have been planted. It can't have been. Unless you safe. Show me. I looked through his memories. Really looked. There was so much, so much more. The Bernays drug, Nashua, planting them, the ship that gave Pen Pennyware's manufacturer his chance, and others, dozens more. So many incidents, strokes of luck. Even the National Enquirer. It wasn't DC's lawyers, wasn't them at all. Was, was any of it real? Was that even, was he the man who ordered his her parents killed? Yes, yes, but all of it, I thought it was luck, skill. Veneers, they'd free him, but he'd never get that time back. He'd never get his company back. You, safe, keep you safe, make it right, make it fair, go, go away, go! Oh, ah, Alfred, Alfred said I'd learned that the world, that we can't just make it into what we'd want it to be. Can't just wish it different. He said I'd learn. See what I mean? Wait, so uh, the bat creature put the drugs in there? It everything. It can also work on t on tweak reality. So it caused the ship to sink. He put the drugs in there so that other company can go under and the company they were backing could do good. So much. The bat, I, so much of Bruce's convenient good luck and good fortune were because of this creature. Oh, that's kind of sucks. He world, never earned it. Trying to make the work, but he didn't know. That's true. And that was his book, too. <laughs> You're not Bruce Wayne, but who are you? Uh, there had been, and I'd like to say Bruce was a creature of moods, but there, and but that's not right. Moods change more swiftly than that. Bruce was more of a creature of ties, and this latest tide was a dark one and lasted for too long. I didn't know what to do about it. And uh, he hadn't been spending much time in the office. Not that business had suffered. He once, uh, and he wasn't making the kind of intuitive leaps he used to those in past few years a Wainwright investment had been showing steady de and dependable growth still something was bothering him some young woman his ongoing Batman mania there had been that dark gloomy movie meaning they were up oh, see in the background yeah so he said the dark gloomy movie Margaret yes. could you connect me with Miss Hedgeland? Perhaps something to do with his charity program, helping victims of crime like him. No, Mr. Jepson, I haven't seen him. I sent him, I sent him, I've sent reports for finishing up two grants, adding four more, but he hasn't been down here in weeks. Thank you, Robin, and please make it Alton. Of course, sir. Hmm. I didn't know Bruce Rainwright like Mr. Jepson did. Now we're on to her now. Mr. Jepson did, but if there was a problem, he owed him so much. Where could he be? What was he doing? Not your city. Not your shadows. Cockroaches. But there's a world of cockroaches. Step on one or two doesn't amount to anything. Safe now. She tells stories. There were stories of him spreading now. But not many. And they weren't much believed. Thanks to our lower pro uh, profile. Oh, come on. 
I hate when it does that. Let's hate them all together. Yay, we riot. Our, our profile of late. Lower profile, right. Like it was a plan. Freeze! I warned you, don't move up. You'd think they'd get tired of this. They've been hunting him ever since I was dumb enough to talk to Gordon. And I'd like to stay in the open now. Let them see me. See that I can I can't I don't con see that I don't contact him. Don't give orders. That I'm not anywhere near whenever he turns up. Not that it matters. I see it all through his eyes. Hear it all. Every snarl and crunch. They haven't given up though. Still following me. I just wish. I wish. All of this I can do. All of it. Even if I don't know how or why. I can manifest Batman. Batman. Like a ghost. Like a guardian angel. Like. I don't know what to do. How to make it work. I've tried for years now. Wanted to get it right. To be sure I chose carefully. Dickie McKenna had taken over most of the local gangs when the Harana mob went down. He ran things from his place in Charlestown. We took him out. His muscle, his closest lieutenant, left enough of his records for the cops that it'd blow open his operation sky high. A big win, you'd think. But did it make the city safer? Did it fix anything? All that happened was someone else stepped up. Trotsky, a Russian who'd come to the promised land, and he and, and his were even worse than McKenna. Crime went up. But we oh. took him out, too. And Dickie McKenna goes right back to running things from prison, using his lawyers and what's left of his gang to consolidate power. We could we could stop that, but what happens then? Who takes over and how bad are they? It wasn't clean. It wasn't easy. Not like it was in the comics. I needed help. Ideas. Guidance. What's this all about, Bruce? Why are we here? I wasn't thinking clearly. I chose Alfred, Al, Robin and Alfred. Uncle Elton. He made sense. He helped me my whole life. I, but her... She felt like part of it, all, all somehow in my mind, but she wasn't. Here, I'll show you. I called to him. I called him to come manifest like he had on times before. I thought, I thought I heard a whisper of his voice. Of something else. Fear. Confusion. Bruce, are you all right? Like, no, no, I'll show you. Come on! It's okay, they're friends. Come on! I order you. Come out now, damn it. Now! He wouldn't show himself. Not to them. Uh, uh, what could I have told them if I if he had? I still don't know anything about him. Where he came from? Why he chose me? Yeah, hey, what an idiot. Uh, yeah, I saw I ta I mean, about talking to the psychiatrist again, and but he just said the same stuff he already had. What? Um, that I was obsessing, unable to let go of my parents' desk. And he might not. E he might even be right. But that was no help. I needed answers. I needed to do what this Batman and know what this Batman was. He was supernatural. Maybe I needed a I needed a mystic answer. I checked out a few fortune dollars. They all um they were all frauds. Uh -huh. Gordon had been suspicious, but he agreed to listen. The pasta's great, but you didn't invite me here for pasta. Yeah, no. I wanted to talk about Batman. Who? The guy in the movies? You know what I mean. You've been following me, investigating me, maybe tapping my phones too, and you found you're not you're not finding anything. Because there's nothing to find. Because I'm not your guy. Doesn't mean there's no guy. We both know there's someone out there, and I think you know. I, he wants to help. He made some mistakes before, but you here you're here to give me a name, kid? Point me somewhere, because if you know something and don't come across, that's ADN. Whoa, whoa. I don't have a who or a where. I got literally nothing you could use to lock the guy up. Believe that or don't. It's true. But I do hear from him from time to time. And if you ever need any help, help. You're offering me some sort of lunatic's help. Wainwright, you're crazy and he is. But I'll tell you this for nothing. Your buddy's going down. And if you're holding hands when he does, all your fancy lawyers won't save you. Nothing's changed after that. Except even more cops followed me for a while. It's not like they had anything interesting to see. Because I was still lost. Still without a, cl a single clue what to do. And yeah, and he's trying to figure it all out. And then Thomas Henry Wainwright. Alfred, tell me about Thomas. Hmm? He burst into my office like he'd been blown in by a particularly violent wind. And there was a look in his eyes. Tell me. I saw the grave. Bruce, what on earth? April 14th, 1960. That's my birthday. Who's Tom or Alf Thomas, Alfred? And then I realized he'd never known. He was too young when Henry and Carol died, and I never thought to tell him. Oh, 
that, Thomas. Sit. Sit. After all, why would I? You're o you almost had a brother, Bruce. A twin. He was stillborn. Your mother was distraught. So we didn't bring him up. She, well, she tried to love you enough for two. But why does it a brother? I'd have, I have had a brother? Brother. And I wondered where was this going to send him. He'd been so glum. Would this be good? Or just something new to obsess about? My brother, my steerborn twin brother, might be Batman. It sounded crazy. Demented. But it was a place. Where do you look into something like that? Turns out college. The Nenspot Valley Community College. At least the start. The opposite of Dr. Katrina Nipsey. From your, and from, for, and for your time, I'm working on a book, a novel. And I'm stuck on something that's kind of in your area. Professor of Parapsychology and Occult Studies. I've got this character. He had a twin brother. Died at birth. But there's something. They're still connected. The brother spirit or whatever is watching over him, protecting him, helping him. And you want to know. I want, to, I want it to feel, you know, real. Accurate. Okay, I like how he's actually coming up with a good explanation to ask her without coming off crazy. <laughs> like, I, I, is there anything in mysticism, folk beliefs, that I can build on? Well, I think so, yes. There's quite a bit of ghost lore. Often about malevolent ghosts like on Duplass, but a ghost can also be a link and a banter from a world beyond. Anything specific about twins? Often, off the top of my head, Elvis Presley believed he had conversations with his stillborn twin, Jesse, as a child. Stephen King's Dark Half, that about a twin absorbed in utero by the other fetus. There are folklores. I could dig up some books. That'd be wonderful. Anything would help. In general, though, sticking to the folklore and not horror fiction, if something like this spirit were real, would it take a, and what kind of form would it take? As a protective spirit? Right. How might the living brother perceive the ghost? How might it appear to him? Well, if a protect if a spirit was as protective, it would be to seek reassure, and to seek to reassure. It might take the form of a totem animal speaking through a family pet, friend, relative, something the living brother would trust. Batman, a bat is a butter sock. Well, of bats, why not? How about a childhood hero, something from the old pulp and movies, like in books, pulp magazines, something like that. Hmm. I doubt you'll find much in literature about that. Ghost stories and folklore largely predate pop culture trademarks and trademarks, though, not entirely. But it makes sense. A trusted symbol, a protector, sure. Look, I've got a class. I can assemble that book list. Thank you so much. This really helps. Uh, I may call again, but I certainly com uh, but I'll, I'll certainly compensate you for your research assistance. Uh, and so, yeah, we finally get some stuff. Gordon, you get around, kid. You really do. Ne and Neon Ponds Valley CC, and you're and you a Harvard man. But okay, kid, let's try this your way a little, huh? Your buddy from the funny pages. There's um, there's this scale been doing damage, but we haven't been able to get a handle on him. Oh, tell me more. The scale's name, you know, Bailey helped him out. Quite a thing. There was a report of violence, so we had to go in. And he says he was assaulted, but there was no one else there. And we found the most incriminating ledgers. Really? Well, that's nice. And that was the start. After that, we got to trail a few guys, trace drug shipments back to suppliers, protect a key witness. I don't know how you do it, kid. I think maybe I don't even want to know. My men see and say they never see you. You never call this guy, never meet with him. Honestly, if you wouldn't believe you wouldn't believe me if I told you. Yeah, whatever. Enough with the preliminaries. Let's talk about Jack Crowder. Jack Crowder, <laughs> a senator. There have been rumors around him for uh, around him for years. He's been on the take, but there were and there were always rumors. Gordon didn't need to know if they were true. Um. So yeah. Um. So yeah. He's basically trying to figure all this stuff out. Um. Call it a hobby. We're making the world better, Eddie. Eddie, <laughs> Bruce, come in for a moment. How are you doing these days? Good, good. The Dyant and Merger is well underway, and I'm looking at a couple of new, I don't mean just business, although I do have to say you're more uh, focused, more engaged. It's quite welcome. But something else has changed. Relax you. Yeah, maybe. I don't understand. I'm happy for you, but I don't understand. You'd ask about Thomas. Is that what it's about? That's part of it, sure. But how? Tell me about him. Tell you about, but he never, I know, I know, but my folks must have talked about him, right? Plans, 
expectations. He has plans, dreams perhaps. Having twins, it was such a surprise your mother, and she was prepared for two of you at once. It was like she was expecting a tornado. She imagined it would be overwhelming. Constant chaos, noise, but a happy chaos, if you know what I mean. It wasn't like that. Uh, I wasn't like that, though. It was, and it was just me. I was pretty quiet. You were. Maybe that's why I liked then. Hmm? Just knowing about him, knowing he was there, that he almost, and that he would almost exist. It's like, it's like, in some ways, I got the rest of the tornado, my tornado back. Thanks, Alf. Sometimes I think I never understood the boy. Not really, and that I never will. I read those books and professor, and they re were really helpful. But I got a few more questions. Uh, but basically, yeah, she's starting to feel a little bit like he's fixating, becoming a bit obsessed. So finally, like, I'd already seen him change in some way, seen him get more and more human, seen him learn. At least I think he learned. They weren't any, and there weren't any cops around. Thomas? So I thought I'd ask. He tried to make the world fair, fair for me, by manipulating things, harming innocent people to benefit me. But he learned, right? I told him not to, and he understands that it doesn't help, doesn't help anyone. Was it? Was that supposed to, that was intended to be blood behind him, right? I think so, yeah. Like a metaphor or whatever? Yeah, yeah. He's changed, he's grown, he must have. This ghost lord, it's ultimately just legend. She doesn't really know whether he's a ghost, a spirit, psychic projection. He's my brother. Safe? You safe? Yes, Tommy, I'm safe. I just wondered. I forget what I wondered. Why don't we just have some fun? Fun? Yes, fun. I'll show you. You'll like it. And they go flying. Oh, that would scare me. That wouldn't be fun. <laughs> Bruce, he told me you were gone. He hasn't been into, um, to see his therapist since months. Hasn't felt the need, apparently. Could it be a girl? Perhaps I was meddling. Old fool. But I hope so. Whatever it was, I was glad of it. I right, can we do this? You and me do this? And we did. We got back to Crowder and it felt good. Better. Like it worked this time. There were rumors of vote buying network. A few leaks. And worse, it turns out he had drug charges in his past. Bought weed in college. Sold some to friends to make his money back. It was pretty small time, but his father paid to hush it up. And that was a story. It hurt him more than the other stuff. We were doing good, Tommy and me, making a difference. We were clicking. We were effective. It was everything we hoped for. Uh, Bruce, I've uh, kind of got a thing. What kind of thing, Eddie? Might be nothing. I've looked in the crowd, like you asked, and expand the scope, look at his opponents, both in the primaries and now, looking to see if he messed with other any of the other campaigns. And, uh, and had he? Not beyond the usual nonsense, but I found this. It was uh, just campaign dirty tricks. Someone caught stealing yard signs. Crowder's young signs in this case. A nothing story, but... Huh? That doesn't make sense. That's what I saw it. A punk named Donnie Reagan had been caught stealing a couple of Crowder's yard signs. The cops thought it was a ho and hooliganism until they found about 60 more in his van. But Donnie Reagan worked for McKenna's and, uh, and the McKenna's and Jack Harren and before them. And if they didn't like Crowder they, and just can't be and, and get the goods on Crowder, but we know he's dirty. If we could show it, get Ted and Healy in there instead of, Ed, oh, you see and see it change then, Bruce. Haley's the goods. Ted Haley was Crowder's appointment, uh, opponent, a city councilman until now. He was respected, accomplished. So why was Boston and, Bo and Boston's biggest mob help, helping him? I found such insert of red rolling in, anger, lightning. And I wanted, we wanted, we wanted the truce. We wanted to beat it out of him, make him talk. Instead, I went home and tried to sleep, tried to think. Oh, boy. Eddie Chen was the best researcher we had, and it was hard to find a trail no one else had so much as sniff, but he had a place to start. Just not seeing anything, Bruce. Maybe it's coincidence. I'm looking for any point in contact between Healy and McKenna, even a small one, but there's nothing. Maybe Crowder got Reagan's amp fire years ago or something. Maybe. Wait. What? Andrew Ganero, former attorney attorney. Here he is with Healy. But there was something, something. Here! Jinpara was in a stink, maybe seven years back. Nothing came of it. But he declined to prosecute uh, close and close to 20 cases involving Hanare. It was a place to start. Andrew Gennaro! Oh, boy. You have failed the city! <laughs> Bruce, it's Detective Hoover again. This is the circle this morning. He says it's urgent. Tell him I'll get him back. 
and Gennaro wasn't the only one talking to me. Whoever he called, it had stirred up Gordon too. And that was the last bit of proof I needed. My buddy, my pal, friendly officer Gordon Hoover, who'd been around since my folks were killed. And through it all that, after all that, oh, that's nice doing Joker disguised as Gordon. I called mm -hmm. Gordon back. It was like I heard him laughing at me. I called him back and arranged to meet. Bruce, what the hell are you doing here? You've got to stop it. Stop it or look, we didn't talk much, though. But let me talk to Bruce. You lie to us. You work for Healy, for criminals. You use us to get them even more power. I didn't. You can't prove. Bruce, Bruce, call this thing off. We can make a deal. There's money. Money enough for him, for you. Bruce. Oh, just a second. Just a sec. Oh, come on. Okay, I, I trusted you to fix things, to help me, to make things better. Detective Hoover broke a leg and three ribs in the fall. Uh, one more thing that didn't, and that they didn't work out in real life the way it would have been comics. Bruce, one more thing. And it felt like a storm was co and was coming. I am building as much inside of me as out. My own private tornado isn't what I'd, th what I'd said. My own tornado. What the? I had sent the goods on Healy to the papers and TV stations anonymously. The crime reporters, political reporters, they did. Enough to find them anyway. Uh, uh, everyone was talking about it. At least I thought everyone was. But it hit. It hit right before election day. Was just and conceded and has just conceded. I'm pleased as punch. Your friend of mine, Ted Healy. The voters, they just ignored it. Or scandal hurt maybe 5 to 7%. But we, and he was so far ahead. If it had broken sooner, maybe more time to spread. Uh, dismissed it as just more dirty tricks in a race that was full of them. He would buried it. If it didn't, if I didn't know anything else by then, I knew that he'd bury it, and the world would be that much worse. And I'd have, I'd have, Mr. Rainwright, Bruce, are you all right? Look upset. If you like to to talk, I couldn't. Couldn't even speak. Hey, the wind, the howling. It's the rain, right? Bruce, what in? Goes right up there and... See, I told you I saw him climbing up. Bruce, Bruce, lad, I... Bruce? You don't deserve him. You don't deserve, deserve? Ha! They didn't deserve a Batman. What they deserve, what the world deserve. Oh, no, he's having a heart attack. I own Bruce Wayne and Wayne White right, a lot. And still... I couldn't. I found myself wondering what he could be thinking, why he did what he did. But now, now I was thinking, what in the hell was he? And there will be a big gap between issues after this. But what do you think so far? So he's basically he's given up, and um, and um, Thomas has taken him away. Uh, for some reason, I thought it was supposed to signify like emerging. <laughs> Something like that. Oh, and then there's stuff from Dark Knight Returns. Mr. Rainwright, Bruce, Robin, sir, what time is it? Did everyone leave? It's 7, 10 a.m. And, and I hope so. I hope they left before most of this. Yeah, I think so. Celebrating something. I forget. Emergency shirt, bottom left desk drawer. I think there should be one left. I wanted to remind you, we have a meeting with the state charity board at 9.15. Called your apartment, but you didn't answer. Should I ask maintenance to clean up here? Meeting. Meeting. Sure. Oh, but Annie just is like, never mind. I'll get it myself. What he can do, it's still so hard to believe. Eve, even after all this time. But I can't not believe. I've seen it. Seen it up on the roof only two years ago. See, I told you. I saw him climb. I know they see it all. He said, I barely remember what he said. Mr. Jepson. Uh, oh, yeah, he gets him. Yeah, he gets to the hospital. He's clearly so like, he had a heart attack, a major one. Not his first, they told us, but his biggest. And he came very close. But he was stable, they said. He'd recover. Uh, and I couldn't stop thinking. My head was just swirling and about him, about all the changes in my life since.
Uh, I had heard, I got to the office and I heard and I came right over. He's going to be all right. Uh, they said he'll probably, oh God, this is my fault. This is all my fault. I did this to him. What was that? What we saw? Not, not now. He wouldn't talk until Mr. Jepson woke up. When he did, he told us about his parents' murder, how he'd wished there was someone like Batman in the world, someone to make things fair, how a Batman showed up like a dream come true, but how he was to control how many mistakes Bruce made, and how somehow Batman was his brother, his stillborn twin Thomas. I wouldn't have believed it, except for what we'd seen. Bruce lad, I didn't see, didn't realize. I should have helped, should have known. No, it's not. It wasn't you, Alfred. You were always there. You were great, but I couldn't. I've got, I have to go, but I'll be back. I'll be later today, I promise. Sir, what? Miss Hedgelin? Take care of him. Um, watch over him. I'll arrange promotions. I'll give you authority to use company resources, whatever you need. Just take care of him. I didn't know how to do that. I didn't even know how you to kill start. him. <laughs> take care of him. <laughs> friendly, helpful, nice. When we met, even before that, when he used the Wainwright money to send me to school after my folks were killed and were killed, what happened to that Bruce? Where did he go? There it is. Doesn't look like anything but a nice house. Other people, basically he's looking at where his parents had died. Now I have power. Now I can do what things no one else can do. And none of it matters. I can't can't do anything that makes a real difference. Not without it turning ugly not, and going wrong. I've tried. Tried so often. It's not like I thought it would be. Nothing is. It gets complicated. Twisted. And, and nothing's right. Nothing works like it should. Hey, Mike, a round of, hey, sorry, pal, didn't mean to. And then watch where you're going, moron. I just bumped you, slick. You really want to make a thing of it? <laughs> you never know. Maybe I do. Take it outside. Up oh, and oh. Started I would have just ignored it. <laughs> and then fought dirty, had a knife, crazy like an animal. Ought to be locked off. Nothing matters. So basically, he's starting to give up on everything. Hey, Rainwright, you're, you're bailed out. Let's go. She came to get me out. Robin, my little sidekick. Of course she didn't. She did. Nothing matters. Not in Bruce world. Nothing sticks. <laughs> hey, made it the front page again. Miss Ra Mr. Rainwright, Bruce, you have to see a doctor. Just wanted to make the world better. Like this? Bruce, you made a lot of people's worlds better uh, and, be and better all of us that you help getting our lives back on track that's something isn't it isn't it and i'm still drunk enough to hey you like me don't you? oh no oh my gosh uh you want to make it up to me go to the damn doctor for me or for alfred at least if you won't go for yourself go to the doctor and do what they say a doctor but i can't okay you're right. Okay. She's cold as the car heads from my place. Why shouldn't she be? She was doing her job cleaning up after me, and I feel like I'm still a kid. Whatever I, I, whenever I do it, it just gets cleaned up. Whatever mess and mess I make, someone fixes them. Lawyers, money, whatever. Uh, uh, but hell, how can I complain about that? Oh, poor me. Life's too easy. I need a freaking keep and freaking keeper. So maybe she's right. Maybe a doctor. See, I try to explain it all, and he thinks, like, you say it saves you? Helps me ever since I was a kid. Protecting me is a defense mechanism. So basically, he thinks that um, it's, um, you know, something of wish fulfillment. Gives him antidepressants. But you feel like, what about Tommy? <laughs> I don't know. The pills, they might kill Tommy or break my connection to him. Um, or maybe, maybe they'd release him. Let him let him go to be whatever he's supposed to be. I just don't know. But I promise. So he takes it. Oh, you know me, your old Uncle Alfred. It's not that easy to get rid of, Bruce. And I'm paying far too much for them to let me die. And you, how are you doing? Bruce seems better. Almost like his old self. Relaxed. Even charming. I've been good. Work's going well. I showed you the car stairs papers. Haven't been drinking. No fighting either. I use the gym instead. It's much healthier. Physical. Yeah. Regi physical regimen, I'm told. And best of all, 
I haven't been arrested in weeks. Police are going to give me a 30-day chip, I think. The legal <laughs> department will be delighted to hear, I'm sure. So the doctor, what does he say? But it's like like he's thinking about whatever he says before he says it. We're giving it time, time to let the pills work before we talk further. Yes, the pills. How's that going, son? I understand it can take some time, some experimentation to find the right medication, the right dosage. They're fine. They're getting used to them, but they aren't. I feel sludgy, confused. Oh, boy. I stopped taking the pills just for a little while, just an experiment. I need to know. I need to talk to Tommy, Thomas, or at least feel what, and feel what he feels about things. They know I told, I, I told them how this feels, how much it means to me to have a brother, a champion, someone in my corner who wants to make things right. How can, uh, so and now he's starting, because he's letting it slip, he's, um, you know, starting to, again, feel, you know, feel like I can't let, you know, go back to the pills. <coughs> Usually how it starts. <laughs> yep. Tell them to back off and let them have some hair. I don't like this, my dear, and I don't, I know you don't either. It's just, I just want what's best for him, and I don't know how to achieve that. I wish, I wish his parents were here. Things are all white for a while. Bruce and time passes. I don't, I avoid Bruce a little. I tell myself it's because he needs space, and Mr. Jepson said to ease off. But I wonder sometimes. It's just because I don't want to know. The drugs are no good. They just make me stupid, and I can't be stupid. Oh, boy, that old excuse. Uh, it's the side effects, bro. Yep, and he's starting to look in at all of these other things. You, Eddie said you'd come down here. I just, I, uh, I needed to. I just <laughs> thought, Robin, there's something here. It's, uh, really it's always sunny in Philadelphia meme. <laughs> ah, I haven't isolated it yet, but there's a pattern behind it all. All about controlling me, keeping me useless, neutered. And they're using you, using out. Oh no! Oh boy, oh, he's good. starting to get paranoid. Oh, and Jepson died. No. He'd been in and out of the hospital since the other heart attack, the one I triggered, mostly in. He kind of know the staff well. I'm just old, he tell me. I'm wearing out. I've outlived so many friends. I never thought I'd still be here after all this time. He told me he was glad to have seen me grow into such a fine man. When he went, he said, I should never think it was my fault. Oh, I know it's not my fault. They did this. They don't want me to figure it out. Oh, boy. He's becoming paranoid. This like that delivery. Jonas Brothers you song. <laughs> you have to let go of this. See the doctor. You have to. This is all I have left. Don't you see? Don't you? Damn it, Bruce. Bruce. She wants to help, but they, they, damn it. I could end this. Just numb myself, find myself, find myself, never see any of it again, but Brucey, 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 you don't get it. You can't beat us. We're too much for you. This is our town, kid. It's always been our town. Your folks, your uncle, those were just games. It can get worse. Take the pills, kids. Take the pills. Let us run the town like we always have. Oh, boy. And you can see where this is going, where he's just going down the drain. I feel this, like, I know, I, and he retired. That's what they said. Retired? Ha! Gordon! Gordon! And I had, and she goes looking, there's Gordon, but he's like, they weren't my aunt. He said I was the link, that he'd find my masters. But the cases he was talking about, they came to me by chance. They weren't my cases. They were, they were his. Mr. Hoover, what did he say? He, did he say anything? You can't. He's too dangerous. He said, he said, oh, I still think I can't hurt you. Still think I can't accomplish anything. He's in the zoo. I can't, I don't, I should be home. I should be somewhere safe. Letting the police handle this. But something tells me they can't. And I, I have to be here. I don't know why, but I have to help. Bats, you can't. You won't. <laughs> you can't. You know. You thought you could make. You thought you could make the world fair. Thought you could make it all nice. A fantasy. A kid's dream. There's no fair. There's only us doing as we please, crushing whoever we want. 
No, I will stop you. Someone has to stop you. Someone has to tear this whole ugly mess down. I like how he's using the villains from different eras. Definitely. <laughs> Bruce, Bruce, stop the storm. It's yours, and it? It'll destroy the city. And if it does, I told you to go. It doesn't deserve to survive. I can take it all down. It's unclean. It's unfair. Take it all down. Would Batman do that? He, you haven't seen it like I have. The lives they've ruined. The lives they made me ruin. What about my life? You saved me, remember? If not for you, there, and where would I be now? They want me to kill Tommy Robin. He's just a kid, a child. How could I? Who? Who wants this? Who are you fighting? <laughs> Them all around us. The masters, the criminals, the one controlling it all, making it like... And who are they, Bruce? Who's here? I... They're here. They have to be here. I found them. I use your brain, Bruce. Use your eyes. You called me here. Somehow, you needed someone to stand with you to show you. Tell me, Bruce. Tell me who you see, who you really see. There. There's. And there was a, it was a soundless, deafening. And when it faded, Bruce, she asked me who I saw, who was really there. There was no one. No one at all. Was it all just ghosts? Just something simple to fight? Someone to punch? Was there even any... Bruce. Bruce. You safe now. Safe. You safe. Oh, Thomas. Tommy. I don't know who I'm crying for. Tommy. Alfred. Mom and Dad. Me. But for the first time in a long time, I feel like... Like... Like maybe the sun might come up. Hey, folks. Hey, Alf. I took, it took a while to find the right pills and the right dosage, but we kept at it, and I'm doing okay. And not much to report. We're expanding the sponsorship program for orphans of crime. Robin's still running it. It's doing really well. And Robin, she's dating a guy, Pete, in accounting. They seem good together. I've been seeing Sharon some from college. I don't think, you'll, think you've ever met her, Elf. She's a human's right attorney now. You like her. All right. Thanks for coming. You want a lift? No, I'm good. Nice, uh, nice day for a walk. Hold on. Oh, jeez. Yeah, meetings that you got. And I know. Basically, they're heading off, and basically, like she likes to say, there's one and one way to be Batman, more than one way to make the world better, and she's right. But there's the stuff I don't share with Alfred and my folks too, or Robin. So what do you say? When your case is finished, a long weekend somewhere, Paris, Bermuda, your choice. Might be a little while. This one's tricky. Be sure and, but sure, that'd be great. A little time to decompress. Stuff I still keep to myself. You okay? I'm fine. You just seem a little, just traffic. And, and what are you going to do, uh, what are you going to do, right? Attack people? Uh, and there's just a few judges I wouldn't mind. Ha! I stop. Safe? So far, buddy. So far. So, yeah! That went by longer than the secret identity, I think. Yeah, is there, like, more pages or something? No, that was it. That was no, just like, okay. um, compared to the, uh, the Super. No, they're about the story. same. Really? It felt so, so long. What did you think of that? Wow, I was, like I was watching uh, melodrama. <laughs> Polar opposite of secret identity, right? Yeah. But what did you think of the artwork? I like the artwork. I liked how they used a lot of the shadows. No, mm -hmm. Not the shadows, the shades. Yeah. And But, but overall, the story... You know, if you had to pick between this and Secret Identity, what would it be? I still prefer Secret Identity. Secret. Yeah, but this, it was interesting. Not as good as Secret Identity. And I think even Busick is aware of that. But it was fascinating how it, it was everything Secret Identity wasn't. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like, it's very interesting for Secret Identity. Um, it's like, ah, ha, 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 we have comics. It's uh, Clark Kent. Yeah. But you kind of are Clark Kent. For this one, uh, Batman is a different entity altogether, which mm -hmm. could be could have been in his head, could have not been in his head. But it's mostly like the joke, like uh, everybody's like, you know, mm -hmm. Batman needs therapy. He we should get him pills for yeah. his. Safety. 
but it, but it felt like um also while well, um Clark resented what what it, you know the Superman stuff, and but he also knew it was comics and just used it as an influence. Bruce really felt like and remember that this, this happened to Bruce at a younger age. I think even much younger than Bruce Wayne himself. Bruce is usually ten, not five. Mm-hmm. But not only that though, but with Clark, it happened in his teens. With Bruce, he was a child. Just yeah, getting that's into right. the comics. And again, I think having this be a period piece moving through history worked better because of how the world was. Yeah, I def yeah, I definitely get that. But the fact that he kept expecting the world to be like the comics, whereas Clark did not. Clark wanted to avoid the comics. I thought for sure Gordon was gonna die. Oh yeah, you saw it he was. Both in the both encounters in the end. But what did you think about him being crooked? Did you see uh, that coming? No, I didn't see that coming at all. I'm like, yo, what's happening? But I trusted sense. you. <laughs> exactly. But it didn't seem a bit convenient that he decided to switch things around and be like, we need him down to, maybe we could use your help. Yeah. <laughs> that should have been the telltale sign right there that something was up. He's like, like, hey, think, what do you know, man? And I'm like, yo, get off my back, bro. <laughs> I, am, I do think, though, it tells that I don't think Alfred was meant to die, given his narrations at first. When Kurt was working on it, because he just couldn't think about how to end it. So mm. I think that's why he ended up having him die. But I think, because if you notice, the air narration stopped partway through the third book. And it I, was, I thought they were going to go the suicide route, to be honest. True. And uh, it seemed like it was going to go heavily that way, but it didn't. I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm like, I don't know why I thought he was going to do suicide. I just feels like it was going to be like so heavily implied that he would, you know, but they, it tricked me in the end. <laughs> One second. But um, but yeah, but but again, I think that that's why I feel like there doesn't need to be a Wonder Woman. What would you do? Like I said, this was everything the polar 180 of Secret Identity. There's not much else you could do that hasn't been done on either of these books. I mean, how did Stanley do the uh, the Wonder Just Woman imagine. one? He, to, he worked with the creators on those. Yeah, but what did he do? It was a woman named Maria or whatever. Yeah, but he also decided, but he still, but this is the case where you're still trying to keep it grounded in the real world. Well, I, well I'm asking, like, what's her origin? Because I don't know her origin. Oh, that, that was an Aztec origin. Oh, it has an Aztec origin? <gasps> yep. And when we get to it, we'll talk about it. But, <laughs> uh, but you get what I'm saying, though. I don't think he could do it well with this. I mean, I guess it can be kind of difficult because Wonder Woman, she people know her as Diana and people know her as Wonder Woman because she doesn't really hide her identity at all. Yeah, and how could you and really how could you make a real world out of this? You know, like I'll think world. about it. <laughs> you, know, but no, you get what I mean? And still have a good theme for it. In this case, it's well, a dark, you know, dark creature of the night and everything. Well, instead of being a, a warrior, how about being in the army and having that some sort of work. PTSD? That, that could work, but I think that would get too dwelled into the feminist side of things. Well, it depends on the era you do it, right? True. Very true. But again, that's up for Kurt, but still, though, but was this, though, this did feel like a great companion piece, though, didn't it? A spiritual mm -hmm. successor. Not sequel, but successor to Secret Identity. Yeah, I definitely but if you notice, see that. At the end of Secret Identity, the world is in a much different place, whereas with Creature of Night, it's as if none of it happened. Just went right back to their world. So, like, he just takes the pills and the creature goes away. Well, he's not fully away. He's still there, just not yeah. as much. Oh, okay. At is the he end, still, still, is he still doing things the right way? I, we don't know, but yeah, safe. Still safe, bro. Still safe, bro. <laughs> but wow. still, it, it was very interesting. So, 
what would you would you rank this as a you really want to get, or would this be more like a you would skim through at a bookstore? Which ones? This one, the specific creature of the one? night, creature of the night. Uh, it's just most. I think this is mostly something I would skip just because it's so. It feels so long. Yeah, but would you get it just for completionist sake to have it next to Secret Identity? Probably. I have that part of me. <laughs> Same with me. That's part of the reason why I got it. But it was still an interesting read, and I think I think if you read through it all the way, you might get a better understanding than what I went through. <laughs> but you also noticed though. The Batman stuff went around with each decade. You had the 60s, the se- and the 70s, and then the 80s. Uh, for secret, I you said for secret identity too, or oh, secret. Ide- uh, and well, I just said it's a good companion piece for that. Yeah, yeah. So... they went to some sort of different eras, but the uh, the creature of the night delved into more of those topics, like one of the guys being black. Yeah, and and Alfred being gay. But I did like how it didn't dwell on it. It was just more of a case of utilizing Bruce, still trying to look at the world, you know, and everything. You know what I mean? Just the way he saw the world. But yeah, these are like fun, fantastic Elseworld reads. Definitely, definitely. So, yeah. Two of our longest videos. <laughs> but yeah, until then, we'll see you on the next one. All right. Bye. Take care.